Okay, so now that we've looked at many of the technologies used in front-end web development, and we have designed and developed websites and apps using front-end web technologies such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, in this part of the course, we are going to learn about back-end app development. Once we have learned about back-end app development, we are going to be able to build full-stack apps. But what exactly is a full-stack app? And I'm posing this maybe simple question to you because a full stack app is a term that's brandished about a lot nowadays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a basic definition first, and then we'll go into more detail about what this actually means as we progress. So then, to start with, at a super high level, full stack app development essentially boils down to front end development plus back end development. And if your app contains both of these concepts, then this will make it a full stack app. The stack part of a full stack app refers to the technologies that you use to build your app. For example, so far we've been building websites and app front ends using Didify, and under the surface, we've shown you that we've been generating code for your app in the following languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this here, has been the front-end technology stack, or as it's often referred to, the front-end tech stack. In this part of the course, we are going to learn about the back-end, and our back-end tech stack is going to include Golang, as well as other technologies such as a database and servers. But to start with, let's think about what exactly is the back-end of your app anyway. Well, so, the back end of your app is going to consist of three main parts. A server, which will serve up your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files over the internet to the front end users of your app. A database that will store the user data for your app, such as the user's emails, usernames, passwords, and login information. And an application. So this is where you create your business logic that describes how your app will work. For example, things like authenticating new users, calculating flight prices, taking payments from your users, things like that. So let's look at a real life example. Let's take a look at the Udemy EdTech web app. So for those of you who don't know, Udemy is a two-sided marketplace for teachers and students to list courses and search and subscribe to different educational courses. So this is a web app because it doesn't just display information. It also has functionality on the back end that enables it to do something concrete, such as search for a course that I'm interested in, subscribe to a course, create a course, message other students and instructors, and so on. So let's say that we go onto Udemy and we look for all the courses that are related to a topic that I'm interested in. Well, I'm interested in learning the guitar, so I'm gonna search guitar and see what I get back. So you can see here that I get a list of results back. So let's filter this list for all the free courses because I'm just testing this out. So I don't want to spend any actual money at the moment. But okay, so here I found a course that I'm interested in attending. So I can click on this course now and I can enroll onto this course for free. So now that I've enrolled on this course, some information which consists of my name, my Udemy registration details and the course that I've enrolled in gets saved somewhere inside the Udemy database. And for simplicity's sake, you can imagine these databases as just giant Excel spreadsheets living somewhere. All of my data is going to get saved on these spreadsheets. And this means that when I come back to Udemy at a later date, I am able to log back into the Udemy app and then retrieve from the Udemy database all of the data that is associated with my account. So you can see here, I can retrieve the information for the guitar course that I've enrolled in. So let's break down this process into a little bit more detail. And to do this, I want to use a really useful analogy that is often used when describing full stack apps. And that is that the structure of a full stack app is kind of like a restaurant. So with a restaurant, you have the front of house, which is the main restaurant where your clients will sit down and have dinner. But there's also the kitchen where the cooking is happening. And finally, there's also the fridge or the larder where the restaurant will store all of the ingredients 
and anything else that you will need in order to make the food. In this analogy, our front of house restaurant is the client side. This is what your users will see in the browser. They are able to interact with the website or web app using JavaScript, and they are able to see all of the information that is being displayed using HTML and CSS. Now, a little bit further back on the back end, you've got the kitchen, and this is analogous to our server. This is the place where all of our dishes get served from. So when the restaurant's customer asks the waiter for a pizza, the waiter will take that order to the kitchen or server, and that server will send back what it is the client is actually ordered, which in this case is gonna be a pizza. And finally, we have the fridges or the larder where all of our ingredients are stored. And this is analogous to the database. This is where all of our users' data for all of the courses that we've enrolled in and all of the data that makes our app function is stored. So this here is where the divide between the front end and the back end happens. It is between the restaurant's front of house and the restaurant's back of house, the kitchen and the larder. Now, just as in restaurants, in app development, you don't actually have to create everything inside of the kitchen. You could also have a restaurant where you make all of the dishes directly in front of the clients. For example, you could just send the chef to each of the customer's tables individually. You could then bring all of the ingredients out from the larder and make the food right there in front of the customer. Now, there are some obvious downsides to this, such as in the case where your pizza recipe contains some secret ingredients and a secret recipe that has maybe been passed down from your great grandmother to your grandmother to your mother and now to you, this is now gonna get exposed, right? Because all of the customers sitting at the table can see exactly how the pizza is being made. They can see all of the ingredients going to it. So anyone could take this recipe and replicate it. And this is the same as with the business logic for your website or web app. If you do everything on the front end, for example, if you do your username and password verification, if you have secret API keys or something proprietary in the way that you've implemented your application, then you don't want this information to be visible every time that somebody loads up your website or app. And the other problem is that it can be really, really time consuming to make the dish in front of the client because you have to bring all of the ingredients directly to the customer's table and then you need to make a dish on the customer's table in small batches. Now in app development, this translates to long loading time. So if you're transporting a lot of code over to the browser and you're executing all of that code on the browser to do whatever bits of business logic you want to do, then this will usually take a lot longer than if it was just done on the back end and you won't be able to do so many things at once. So the alternative is that we take our ingredients out of our database so our application is going to interact directly with our database. We then execute some code on the server and we create a little bit of an application or the dish in this case, which then gets served to our client side. Doing it this way means we don't need to transport any ingredients. And of course, in app development, this means that we don't need to transport a lot of code, which can vastly speed up your website or app and also keeps your business logic hidden. Now, on the back end, there are a lot of different technologies that we could use to build the back end. And these include technologies such as PHP, Python, Java, Node.js, and Golang, amongst many, many others. Now, in addition, there are also frameworks such as CakePHP, Django, Spring, Express, and Gorilla. And these frameworks are things used by developers in order to speed up your app development. In the coming lessons, we're going to be using the Didify no-code builder to build back-end technology. Didify is useful here because it lets you write enterprise-grade back-end code even faster than developers can write code using one of these frameworks. Also, just like the Didify front-end builder, the Didify back-end builder auto-generates real code. And the code that Didify will generate for you will be Golang, which is a new and really powerful language developed by Google. So now your app's final tech stack is gonna look something like this. You're gonna have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on the front end of your app, and Golang on the back end of your app. And the best part of all of this is that we don't need to learn a new programming language to do any of this at all, because we are gonna be using Didify to build apps and write Golang code in an entirely visual way. So for all of that and more on Didify and Golang, 
I'll see you in the next lesson.